Good morning, folks. Have some interesting articles today. The weather catastrophe on the other side of the world continues, and we got another large earthquake yesterday afternoon. The sunspots have been quiet, which leaves us looking to the incoming plasma filaments for eruption threats. Earth facing quiet remains dominant. Let's check it all out, starting at spaceweathernews.com, seeing that the large, dark coronal hole is beginning to move on now, finally. No flashes or ejecta. Bright new grouping north on the left has no notable umbras within it, just surface magnetism. Solar flaring is dismal, on track to go down to A range if nothing happens soon. Solar wind is calming as well as density in orange is stable and yellow speed is waning. Now let's quickly look back at the news from May 14th and May 17th this past week. Focusing directly on the coronal hole now, the first part didn't hit the equator so the quake watch is moderate. Had that amazing volcano eruption at Torre Alba we showed yesterday, but that's about it. I hate to sound like a broken record, but again, the backside turning in now does cross the equator, and there's no chance the IMF from that one misses us. More significant quake watch coming. The trio of sunspots departed the disk two days ago. We saw the sunspot number drop off, but not our coverage app score based on size, not number. And it is plateauing at the same time the coronal hole's transequatorial portion begins to face Earth. The score is peaking today, so our quake watch maximum goes from now until the 19th. Well, as I mentioned, after no magnitude 6 quakes the first 17 days of the month, the quake scoring peaked as coronal holes directly faced Earth and we got our big ones. There's been at least one confirmed casualty. Here's what our coronal hole scoring looks like. Actually peaked on the 18th, not the 17th, as you heard in the look back to the previous morning news. Coming back down now as the coronal hole begins to turn away. Please note, however, that its solar wind stream is on its way to Earth and expected before the weekend, so now back to expecting geomagnetic storms. Top news today starts with lunar and annular modulation of cosmic indices. This makes sense for those who know about cosmic rays, just nice to see it in writing. Fascinating story out about the old school techniques yielding greater results than the poison that grows from Monsanto's crops. There's a reason they gave farmers their seeds for free at first. Drug dealers use the same tactics. Here's the April map of global temperatures. The one circulating mainstream news seems to be the percentiles map, which shows way more red and way less about reality. Nice mix as La Nina conditions come on hard. Sri Lanka, hundreds of thousands of people displaced as areas where towns once stood lay flattened and under millions of tons of mud. I cannot believe the cyclone intensified the last 24 hours, now officially on the Joint Center's watch list as the first one of the new season in the northern waters. Folks, this is ongoing, a catastrophe taking place and we can do nothing but watch. We had a new deeper look come out yesterday for website members at suspiciousobservers.org. Little extension of humans and electromagnetism, but this time we introduced some basic weather intermediaries. Not a member? How about hundreds of hours of material for less than a fast food value meal? We've got the pressure and radar in the top viewer locations, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6 a.m. in the east, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.